I was fortunate enough to be elected on November 7th. I was sworn into office November 13th. Um, the way they take new people that come in in special elections is they ask you to vote after, immediately after you're sworn in. And so I was handed a, a voting card, a sworn in, handed a voting card, and started voting that night. Two days later, I had the opportunity to vote on tax reform. And um, another unique thing about the way they start you is there are health, house ethics rules that actually prohibit you from putting a staff together before you're sworn in. And so there you are voting uh, with no staff. And we p quickly put a staff together. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that um, we, we just hit a grand slam uh, with, with our staff. Can't do uh, what we do back there without a great staff. Many of you know Corey Norman. Corey's in the back of the room. Corey was my deputy mayor for eight years with the city. And he agreed to come join me as my chief of staff in Washington. And that's been a great decision. And, and it's really been uh, good for me. But we picked up some additional staff there. A lot of people have asked about Jason's staff. Most of his staff left during that period of time between when he resigned and I came. That was too much for them to kind of wait to see. And so most of the staff left. Uh, we have a, a couple of uh, individuals that stayed um, that had just barely started with him in Washington, D.C. And here in the district, uh, we have two of his staff members, but everything else is, is brand new. Some of you will know Lori Falk. Uh, Lori was in uh, the state legislature at a law firm here in the city, and um, really pleased that she would join us as our district director here in the district. And she heads up just an amazing team here in the district. So that was kind of mission one, is getting the team together, and, and we did that. Um, there are a couple other categories that I would share with you. One is the legislative work that we've been doing the last uh, three and a half months. Uh, to be frank, it's been aggressive. Uh, we've taken a really aggressive legislative uh, posture with some things that are just critical for the district that we get, want to get done. Uh, I'll start with one of the easier ones that's not quite as critical, but that gives me a chance to brag that uh, the team has actually introduced our first bill into the House of Representatives, uh, taken it through committee, and passed the bill. Um, pleased to tell you it passed with a vote of 392 to 6. Um, you want bipartisan work, and, and, and there you go. Uh, we jokingly call it my fish bill because it, um, it works on saving four endangered species in the Colorado and San Juan River. Now that may sound a little odd for your Republican representative to jump right in into endangered species, but uh, let me give you a little background on that. In these waterways, the San Juan and the Colorado River and these major waterways, um, anytime you do something in the waterways, there is a mandate that you do an offsetting mitigation. So when farmers take water out of the, out of the river, when we build a bridge, when we build a dam, anything like that, uh, they're required to do a mitigation work for the environment. So the bill uh, sets up a framework for those water users to contribute to a fund that uh, works on these endangered species. My favorite of the four species is called the Colorado minnow. Anyone want to guess how big the Colorado minnow is? Six feet. <laughs> Literally, we have a fish that's six feet in size in the Colorado and San Juan River, but it's endangered. And so this works to bring it back. The reason the people love the bill is there's not a single tax dollar involved, and uh, yet it helps the recreationists and helps the farmers and things like that. Uh, not so easy and, and um, um, far more controversial is my Bears Ears bill. Uh, many of you will remember that I'd been in office three weeks when President Trump came out from Washington, D.C., a very rare occurrence for a president to come to our state. We've seen it maybe occasionally during a campaign but very rare for him to come uh, during a, uh, a non-campaign. He came out to rescind what President Obama had done with Bears Ears, rescinded it by about 80%. Don't need to tell all of you, it was very controversial. Some people love it, some people hate it. And so I, of course, jumped right into the middle of it and put a bill in uh, to try to bring some resolution to it. Um, nobody should be alarmed or surprised that um, it's a hard bill that there's not a lot of um, agreement among the different stakeholders about what needs to be done in that area. But I'm, I'm a, a strong advocate that these things are far better dealt with with legislation than they are with the Antiquities Act. The Antiquities Act is not a very good tool to bring resolution. So my bill tries to go in and do what everybody wants to do, uh, which is protect and preserve the land and, and maintain traditional uses. It's interesting, all the stakeholders seem to agree on what we want in the end but they can't agree on how we get there or who gets to make the decisions, and that's the real divisiveness. Um, likewise, we're going to be putting a bill in next week. It's a, also a public lands bill. It's for Emory County. 
Uh, Emory County has some of the most beautiful scenery in the state, and it's a little bit undiscovered. We all know about arches, we know about Canyonlands, we know about Zion, uh, but very uh, few people, particularly out of state, know about what we have in Emory County with the swell. And they're trying to get ahead of an Antiquities Act uh, declaration from a president by putting a, a lands bill together that would um, make that unnecessary. It's a good bill. They've been working on it for years. Um, the timing is just perfect. Uh, and and they're, uh, they've come to me and asked me to run this bill because of the timing. The timing is that we have Congressman Rob Bishop in charge of the Natural Resource Committee in the House and Senator Hatch, who has agreed to champion this cause in the Senate. And we think we can actually get this bill through in this legislative uh, year, which would be a, just a great achievement. I also have a bill in uh, called my Rural Broadband Permitting Bill. One of the things that I learned as I got into this is that the wonderful economy that we're enjoying right here in Utah County is not shared by um, a high percentage of the land mass of this district. Our rural areas are really hurting. If you just go 60, 70 minutes south of here, you get into double digit unemployment and some, some real difficult economic conditions. So one of the things that I'm working on to try to help them with that is getting broadband into these rural communities. 90% of the land in these communities is federal land. And guess what? The federal government makes it really hard to permit for broadband. So the broadband permitting bill eases those restrictions on going across federal land, uh, helping economic development in these regions. That's what we've been doing legislatively. Let me tell you what we've been doing in the category of constituent outreach. Um, I have a team that um, is going crazy and setting up town hall meetings. Uh, we've completed somewhere, there's a little bit of discrepancy uh, between 28, 29, and 30 town hall meetings in the last 33. 33. See, you can see the discrepancy. Uh, let's just put it this way, dozens of town hall meetings um, in the last uh, several months. Uh, I come home for the weekend, the team will set up five town hall meetings uh, just in a weekend. These have been really good experiences. These have been um, groups generally between 50 and 100 uh, different people. And uh, it's been very good for me to hear what's on people's minds, uh, to have to come back and be accountable uh, to these people on what I'm doing and in my votes. And we've really enjoyed them. I do think that's a little bit of a record. I'm not sure that we've had somebody do that many town hall meetings before. Um, but I made some promises uh, when I was running that I would do these town hall meetings and just feel like they're incredibly important, uh, a, a tool for reaching out and understanding what's on constituent minds, constituents' minds. We've companioned, we put that as a companion with Ask Me Anything sessions from Washington, D.C., where we hop on Facebook Live and let people ask me questions uh, back there. And of course, the tr traditional social media tools of, that we're using to reach out and try to share uh, what, what we're doing. Another major thing that a new congressman does um, is get himself or herself on committees. And it's a very important thing uh, because it casts the die in many ways uh, about where you're going to go. These committee assignments are very political in nature. Uh, there's a lot of jockeying uh, to get the right uh, assignments. It's complicated when you come in midterm like I did because normally when you come in with a bunch of other congressmen, there's all these vacancies on the committees. And when you come in midterm, you don't have those same opportunities. So I was really pleased when they reached out and said, we'd like you to be on the small business committee. Uh, I love small business. I, I had a small business. My father had a small business. Much of the economy here in our valley is based on small businesses. And even the businesses that are large were small businesses, many of them here in our valley. And I have found um, a very important role and a role I really enjoy advocating for small business. It's not unusual that I find myself in these committee hearings kind of pounding the pulpit and saying, we have to understand what it's like for our small businesses when we overregulate, when we overtax our small businesses. And that's a, that's a role I've really enjoyed back there. In addition, I was very pleased that they extended an invitation to me to be on Foreign Affairs. Uh, Foreign Affairs is a very important committee, especially with everything that's going on. I'm on two different subcommittees of Foreign Affairs. I'm on Middle East and Eurasia and Emerging Threats. And uh, you well know all the things that are going on right now in, in the world uh, dealing uh, with these regions. So having an opportunity to serve on these committees, I think, is critical for our district. Uh, several weeks ago, they approached me and they said, we actually would like you to take a third committee assignment. That's a little bit unusual. But um, they've asked me to be on natural resources. Can't turn that down because natural resources has so many things relevant to this district and to the state. I smiled and said, okay, I'll, I'll be on natural resources if you let me be on the energy subcommittee. Um, I like energy. We have so much of it in our area. I dealt a lot with it as the mayor of Provo. 
And they smiled back and they said, we will let you be on the energy subcommittee if you'll also be on public lands subcommittee. Um, also critically important uh, for our uh, area. So really pleased with those committee assignments and feel like that's a, a strong reflection of how I'm viewed back there by uh, not only my peers, but leadership um, and, and what they uh, would like me to do and what they envision that I can do back there. Uh, the last thing I'd mention uh, that I've been doing is my voting record. We vote a lot. Um, I don't think most people realize that we'll vote sometimes six times a day. Um, and uh, in a week, it's not unusual that we would have voted on several dozen bills. And that's a challenge. That's where you need the team uh, to be able to, to be ready for all of those votes. One of the things I've learned back there is surprisingly, Congress does a lot more bipartisan work than we brag about. 90% of what's, of what's passed through the House is passed on a bipartisan basis. Uh, we don't talk very much about that, and I think we should talk about it more. There's a process you can go through to put a bill on what's called suspension. When you put it on suspension, you agree to suspend the rules to debate and, and other rules. And you also agree that you'll let it, that it'll only pass if you have a two-thirds majority. 90% of what we do goes through on suspension with a two-thirds majority. And we need to do a better job of, of talking about that. But we have had some, some very significant votes that were obviously were not suspension votes. The tax bill I mentioned, it was um, a lot of fun to be back there and vote on the tax bill. And I also found that as the tax bill went through the House just two days after I was there, and then it went through the Senate, there was a window of opportunity when those two bills had to merge. And um, found my Self having an opportunity to lobby for several things that were very important for Utah to come out in that bill, particularly the child tax credit that was so important for us. And I want you to know that your whole delegation, both in the Senate and the House, was very engaged in, in, in enhancing and protecting that in that tax bill. We've also had some serious, substantial budget votes, and I suspect some of you will want to talk about those in more detail tonight. Um, about a month ago, we voted to raise the caps of the amount that we spend. And uh, that was a vote when the moment I heard about it, I just knew I couldn't vote for that. Um, and so I voted against that. And just last week, we voted on the increased budget of hundreds of billions of dollars. And likewise, I knew that, that I couldn't vote for that as well, and I, and I voted against that. That, yeah, yeah thank you for, for acknowledging that. I think that's uh, one of the things that's really important is to come back and get that feedback that, that you do appreciate that. Um, so, so thank you. So that's what I've been doing as your representative back there. It's been a fast paced. Um, it's been a fun. Uh, I'm learning more than I can imagine. I, I tell people that it's a little bit like um, uh, 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 going to the Super Bowl. In some of my conference meetings with my fellow Republicans, we sit in a very large room like this. They put a microphone on both sides of the room. They close the doors. And my peers line up uh, on these microphones. And they debate issues in, in a passionate, uh, informed way, and I sit on that front row and I just absorb it all. And it's been a fascinating experience for me.